I'm Hazus, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the five biggest clowns in the history of CSGO skins. Skins exist at the unholy junction of money, greed, and stupidity, and this is the perfect combination to create a class of drama queens who've humiliated themselves in various ways within the community. I am very keen to be taking a look at them and all the stupid things they've gotten up to, so I hope you enjoy. Now, today's video is sponsored by SkinsMonkey. SkinsMonkey is a site where you can easily and safely trade your CSGO skins. Just log in through Steam, add your trade link, and you're good to go. Trades are extremely simple to do, and once you've picked the skins you want, they take just seconds to complete. Any excess will be added to your balance, and if the skin you want isn't tradable, it can be reserved for you until it is. Now. You can use the code Jesus to get two bonuses on the site too, a bonus of up to $5 when you do your first trade, and also a 5% bonus if you buy balance on the site. And this one works unlimited times too, so if you are ever buying balance, make sure you use the code. And finally, it also has daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways. So even if you don't have any skins, there is something here for you. Great site, check it out, link, is in the description. Now, the goat is an extremely interesting character. In some respects, he is a master of social engineering, and in others, he is a moron who didn't properly cover his ass after he very publicly scammed two prominent traders and proceeded to get himself scammed in the aftermath. So, where to begin? Well, long story short. This guy is a gambling addicted scammer who's been scamming people under a variety of aliases since at least 2015. Recently though, he rose to prominence when he speed ran an exit scam on Twitter where he stole 50k off two large figures in the community all in the space of a couple of weeks. Specifically, he actually came into my stream and dropped a bunch of $50 donations claiming he was community banned and needed my help. I then linked him with another trader called Mateo Cat, a guy who is way too nice for his own good, who incorrectly believed the goat was someone he could trust. I'm not quite sure what the backstory is here exactly, although it's clear the goat had already socially engineered Mateo to some extent, but either way, me and Mateo signal boosted the guy on his new Twitter account, and he then began clowning around farming attention, doing giveaways with Arrow, giving Onipixel the money to open Bravo cases, that's so fucking stupid, why would you open those? And after building up a small following over a couple of weeks, he immediately turned around and scammed two traders, Fox and Mateo, for $50,000, at which point he deleted his Twitter and ran. It was incredibly obvious in hindsight, but nonetheless, he pulled it off. Well, he almost pulled it off. You see, it didn't occur to him that other traders might try and scam him back when he tried to liquidate the stuff he'd stolen, and that is exactly what ended up happening. Fox managed to scam him back for a bunch of the money that he lost. How the fuck you could possibly make a mistake like that when you're a scammer, I don't know, it's pretty embarrassing, but the goat ended up falling for it. Get wrecked, bozo. But Either way, this jackass is still lurking in the shadows somewhere with a gambling addiction to feed, so I'm sure he will be back to try and scam people at some point in the future, and given people are going to be ready next time, I think his days of being a clown are going to be far from over. Now, while the goat may have at least tried to hide his shame after exposing himself as a scammer, some people out there are such narcissistic twats that they can't help but proudly display themselves to the world. And one of those people is a scammer called Andre. Now, Andre is a professional bottom feeder. His specialty is identifying vulnerable people and stealing skins from them. And over the years, he has done a lot of that scamming, many thousands of dollars of skins on a network of accounts. In fact, he was so confident that he wouldn't get banned that he proudly displayed a $100,000 inventory of scam skins on his main account. And while this may have helped him lure in victims, it definitely didn't help him when Steam support eventually came knocking, and Andre was very quickly hurting to a six-figure tune. However, this on its own was not what earned Andre a spot in this video. It's actually the bitching and moaning he did on his profile afterwards, which he flooded with memes about how Steam support refused to help him remove his ban. Cope and seethe, Andre. But don't worry, he definitely was spamming Steam, and they ended up getting so annoyed with him they actually deleted his entire inventory to stop him begging them to unban it. Rip Bozo. Also, apparently he's threatening to go to Steam's offices to 
beat them up or something, so they give him back the skins. Uh, good luck with that, bro. We all know you're probably five foot two, but anyway, this in turn led me to take the piss out of him in a video of mine, and in response, he appears to have developed a bit of a man crush on me, which is really the worst offense of all here, simping. I mean, who's that good looking guy on his profile? Well, whoever he is, I don't think he actually likes Andre. So, I want to talk about a guy called Ozzy. Now, Ozzy is a character who was well known in the Australian scene for dropping game awards in community servers, giving his weapons racist names, declaring he was completely fine with racism on his Twitch channel, and then doxing himself one paragraph down from where he publicly declared just how okay he was with racism. But having said all of this, Ozzy is not on this list just for being a Red Trust Factor player. He's on this list for blatantly committing a crime that was always going to be exposed and then being humiliated in front of the entire CSGO community when he got caught. You see, Ozzy saw some artwork of a dog that he liked on someone else's deviant art, so he decided to pull a Control Plus C and then went to another CSGO skin creator claiming he was the original author. The resulting skin was called The Hound, and Ozzy carefully covered his tracks by inventing a totally believable cover story where he claimed he based it on his dog. Very believable stuff, but the skin was a hit, and in a twist of fate, it was added to the game in the Huntsman case. Now, at this point, Ozzy was basically completely fucked and was 100% guaranteed he was going to get discovered, but being a brain-dead idiot, the possibility of this happening didn't even occur to him, and instead, he would proudly display the artwork on his Twitch and his Steam bathing in the glory of something he never even drew in the first place. Well, spoiler alert, he got found out. The original author filed a DMCA, Valve banned Ozzy and his co-creator from the workshop, Reddit had a ton of fun laughing at him, and Ozzy took it all like a man, by which I mean he went private on Steam and changed his username to imply that apparently it was all just a giant conspiracy and he was actually a good boy who didn't do anything. Now, sadly, this also means that Mr. I'm okay with racism but keep it mature would also abandon his Twitch career. Truly, a great loss for the scene. AUCS has been set back an entire generation. So, there are a couple of legendary accounts out there, hidden deep in the bowels of Steam servers in Seattle. A powerful testimony to the hubris of man, or more accurately, the lethal combination of greed and stupidity that defined the jackasses who ran CSGO gambling sites before Valve came in and destroyed them all with the trade hold. Now, I have no idea what this particular guy's real name is, and if I was in his position, I definitely wouldn't be sharing it anyway, but we're gonna call him Lucasello. Now, Lucasello was the owner of a site called CSGO Reaper, which at first glance, probably just sounds like another one of those dodgy sites some dirtbag created to make a quick buck by stealing a case from children. But this site really stood out because its owner was a giant idiot. You see, this bloke had the genius idea of storing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars of skins in a single account Valve could easily identify and ban if they ever decided they didn't like their platform being used to scam children. In particular, he would stick 147 Dragon Laws, 74 Medusas, and 104 Howls in a single account, which would be worth at least $2 million today. Keyword there being would, because in a shocking twist of events in early 2017, Valve would identify this very obvious dumping ground for a gambling site owner and came in and banned it. Wow, if only someone could have seen this coming and moved the skin somewhere else. Lucasillo had another trick up his sleeve though. In particular, he bought a souvenir scooter or dragon law for 68,000 US dollars right after Cloud9 fluked the 2018 Boston Major. This purchase was notorious enough to literally be joked about on Adult Swim, but as it turned out, this purchase was just about as financially durable as Cloud9's performance after that major, because a week later, Valve would ban this account for its involvement in gambling too. Again, apparently using an alt that wasn't connected to his gambling site was just too much effort for this guy. Now, in fairness to Lucasillo, he certainly helped to inflate the price of skins like the Dragon Lord and the Howl by getting all this shit banned. Yes, he's a fucking moron who never should have left his skins in obvious places where Valve could easily find them and ban them, but at least he served the community when he did it. Perhaps we should be putting a flower on this clown's grave. After all, his pain was everyone else's gain. Now, of all the clowns in the history of CSGO, 
there is no one out there more legendary than a player called Luna. Now, Luna may seem like a distant memory at this point, but it was only a year ago that his clown ass stumbled out of our scene after making a complete idiot of himself. So to explain who this guy was, essentially, he was a Dota 2 player with a background in crypto who decided CSGO as a community full of saps he could make a quick buck from, apparently thinking all the shit you can do with NFTs would somehow work here. It wouldn't, but if he didn't try, we wouldn't have this amazing story. So after pulling up in our scene and looking for somewhere to dump his money, his first step would be to lowball a content creator called Prodigy for his reason hollers for having a massive tantrum when Prodigy told him to fuck off. But not to worry, Luckily, he was able to pick up 14 Titan Hollows for roughly $60,000 each from Mateo Cat, an investment he declared he was going to keep for years. This was a ballsy but otherwise respectable investment move, or at least it would have been if he actually did it. In retrospect, I think he may have actually been lying and just trying to pump the market short term. And the reason I think that is because of what he did next. He started hoarding blood pressure and black tie gloves from the Operation Broken Fang case. Now, these gloves were being rapidly unboxed at the time, so hoarding them was effectively an act of financial suicide. They were going down one way or another, but Luna appears to have been under the delusion that he could somehow run a pump and dump on them. Of course, as it turned out, he couldn't. The price of the gloves crashed and he lost a lot of money. Now, while all this was going on, Luna was busy acting like an arrogant twat on Twitter, boasting about how good he was at video games. And when the trolls inevitably decided to stir him up, Luna took the bait even harder than he'd taken the L on his glove purchases, resulting in a toxic spiral where the dregs of Twitter enthusiastically drove him fucking nuts. And to top all this off, while his Titan Hollow stagnated in price, Luna had to sit back and watch Bitcoin surge to an all-time high of over 60,000 US dollars, at which point he decided to make the galaxy brain decision to quick sell his Titan Hollows and all his other skins to buy crypto at its all-time maximum price. In the process of quick selling alone, he would lose hundreds of thousands of dollars, and <laughs> that's before crypto crashed afterwards. I don't know where he is now, but I hope he can still afford his makeup because he truly is the biggest clown in CSGO history. Anyway, with that, I think this video is done. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Massively appreciated. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.